will the temple fall from heaven? We have longer shiurim about this, and the answer is I don't know. That'd be pretty cool if it did, but if you're if you're not Rashi, there's no reason to believe that it will. Uh, why? Because we saw that it's an idea. The temple falling from heaven, so to speak, already built, just happening overnight, is something that Rashi in Lulav HaGazel, the chapter in Sukkah, there was trying to use to explain how it is that the temple would suddenly be around on Cholomoy Passover, uh, that means the intermediate days uh, of the festival between the two Yom and Tovim, if there's no way to build a temple on the actual festival day, the first of Passover, and not at night, so there was no temple before the uh, before the holiday started, and then suddenly in the middle of the holiday there's a temple, and there's no time to build it, so where to come from? So it must have fallen from heaven. So uh, that's not only is that idea a little bit odd, it was never said by the sages before, and it's obviously not held by Rashi's contemporaries and later Rishonim, or anybody who came before him, there's other ways to explain the Gemara there. Basically that the temple service will be inaugurated on Cholomoy Pesach, but it doesn't have to be that the temple itself will be completed suddenly overnight. It takes a while to build a whole temple. That was the first thing. And Rashi himself in Ksubis says that, yeah, the temple will be built by the Tzadikim. So the fact is that this Machlok is Rashi and Rashi, and no one else holds like Rashi, so we shouldn't be waiting for a temple to fall from heaven. Instead, we're supposed to keep our commandments and build our temple. That's the basic sugi there. But for many people, the idea of a temple falling from heaven is one of the Ani Mamims. Ani Mamim, that the temple fall from heaven, and therefore, like the, we just saw the Ravid say, it's Lekula and Lechumra. It makes it results in Lechumra. Uh, the popularity of the ideas, uh, Rabbi Barachim said, uh, seems to be uh, so much so that it makes the... Uh, it's pernicious. It makes it that no one thought anything good could happen throughout the you know, 2,000 years of exile. Okay, It basically turns everything into a fantasy. You can't imagine there will be a redemption, so everything is miraculous. There's only no way to actually see this happening. So if you combine this with a Satmar mindset uh, that you have to basically do nothing to make the redemption come true, even though the prophets have given us prophecies and it's a commandment to make the words of the prophets come true, uh, in this case, you're not supposed to, it is forbidden for us to do anything and we're obliged to wait. And that's, by the way, the opinion of the current Sephardic chief rabbi, who we mentioned earlier, who is uh, uh, certainly very much convinced of these ideas. So you can't do anything to build a temple. It has to fall from heaven. Chas you do anything about that, and that's what we believe. 